Hello everyone, my name is Techno, and today I will be discussing about cloud support engineering and if experience in the cloud industry is required to become a cloud support engineer. By the end of this video, you'll learn the important services that a cloud support engineer will work with, such as EC2, S3, and IAM, as well as the services that I work with in my day to day. So, is experience required at AWS in order to be a cloud support engineer? The short answer is no, you don't need any kind of experience at all uh, in the cloud industry to be a cloud support engineer. One thing that's required is your dedication to learn. At AWS, one of the leadership principles is learn and be curious. This leadership principle is extremely common for most, if not all, cloud support engineers as you'll constantly be learning new things every single day as you are working with different kinds of services or new technology. What you can expect when you're onboarding as a cloud support engineer is learning new services specified for your particular role or profile. So in my case, when I started at networking, I slowly learned different kinds of services. First, I learned the basics. These basics are learning EC2, S3, and the IAM service. Once I understand those basic services, I then move on to the services specified or tailored to my profile. In this case, it was site-to-site -site VPN, Direct Connect, AWS Transit Gateway, and AWS Cloud VPN, among other kind of services. But those are the main ones that I work with. During the onboarding process, it might take about six months to fully understand all the different kind of services related to your profile. So you'll be slowly working on cases, starting off with one service, and slowly ramp your way up to all the required services for your specified profile. So of course, when you're onboarding, you're going to have a mentor who's going to be able to teach you these kinds of services from the beginning of your role all the way to the point where you become tenured. Okay, so let's say that you're applying to AWS and you want to be a cloud support engineer. The first thing that I would recommend is of course, tailoring your resume. Make sure that you have all of the relevant experiences, work history, projects that you might have worked on that is similar to the role that you'll be applying to. For me, I didn't have any experiences in the cloud, but I did have experience in the IT industry. So I was originally in the help desk field and I put all the experiences that I had as a help desk, whether that's being on call with a customer, whether that's creating a ticket, specifically what kind of projects did I work on in the IT help desk role that would be helpful for interviewers to understand my role and how it's similar to this cloud support engineering role that I'm applying to. Once I had all of that down, then of course, that's when interviewing comes into play. If you haven't seen my videos already, I would definitely recommend watching the star format so that way you understand how to speak in a certain format when you're talking to interviewers. I would definitely recommend getting AWS certifications. For example, the AWS certification that you can get is the Cloud Practitioner certification. This certification is not required, but it's definitely helpful to have because that way you'll be able to dip your toes into the cloud industry and understand what kind of services does AWS have and which ones do you think you'll be working with. And if you haven't already, I would 100% recommend creating an AWS account. And once you create your AWS account, you'll be able to play around with EC2 instances or other various AWS services. So that way you can understand how it works and what you might be working with in your potential cloud support engineering role. Let's talk about EC2 really quick. EC2 instances stand for Elastic Compute Cloud. And these instances are basically virtual machines that you're able to create. For example, you could have a really, really small EC2 instance to a really big, powerful EC2 instance. With these EC2 instances, you can install different kinds of operating systems. You could have firewalls on there, you could have a Windows operating system on there, or even a Linux operating system. There's a lot of operating systems out there that you can install onto this EC2 instance. And I would 100% recommend creating at least a T2 micro EC2 so that way you understand how to create an EC2 instance and kind of mess around with different settings configured to it. For example, you can mess around with security groups, network ACLs, route tables, all the sorts. So that way you can understand how is traffic moving in and out of this EC2. The next service that I would recommend is Simple Storage Service. This allows you to basically store files into the cloud. You can think of it as a file manager in a sense that you could compare it to maybe Google Drive. You can store photos, videos, or any kind of documentation that you like onto the cloud. I would recommend labbing this up by creating your own S3 bucket and then uploading photos or videos to it. It's a very simple project, but I would definitely recommend looking into it so that way you can at least experience what it's like to create an S3 bucket and what you can do with it. The last service that I would recommend working with is Identity Access Management or IAM. 
This allows you to basically specify which specific user is allowed to access what service and what can they do with that service. For example, I might only want read permissions from a certain user or I want read and write permissions for the administrator. Of course, you can definitely delve into more details, but as long as you understand that fundamental, you're good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about what services do I work with. And as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I work with site to set VPN, Direct Connect, Transit Gateway, and Client VPN. These are the core services that I mainly work with, and there's a bunch of different smaller services that I do work with as well, but the four primary ones are the ones that I just listed. The whole purpose of having that site to site VPN is so that your users from your on-prem side are able to access whatever resources they need on the cloud. Next, we have Transit Gateway. This allows you to connect multiple different VPCs together, and it works in conjunction with Direct Connect, Client VPN, and Site to Site VPN, so it's a pretty big service. Not only that, but you can connect your Transit Gateway with multiple Transit Gateways, so that way you can connect from one VPC in one account to another VPC in a completely different account or multiple different kind of VPCs. Next, we have Direct Connect. Direct Connect is the same thing like Site to Site VPN in the sense that you would like to connect from your on-prem side to the cloud, but this time it's dedicated. So that way you have a lot more bandwidth to connect from your on-prem side to your AWS cloud environment. Lastly, we have Client VPN. This service would be very similar to Site to Site VPN, except the only difference is your users could be individual users. For example, they could be in homes, they could be working from an office, a cafe, wherever they're working from, connect to that client VPN and still have access to AWS resources. I didn't know any of these services prior to being a cloud support engineer. Before I was a cloud support engineer, I had zero experience in the cloud. I didn't really know much about AWS. I didn't know about other kind of cloud services. I just knew the cloud existed, but I didn't know how it worked. And now that I'm a cloud support engineer, I'm armed with the knowledge to work with these services and to troubleshoot problems with customers. So if you're ever worried about getting into the cloud because you might not have experience, don't worry about that because when you become a cloud support engineer, you'll be able to learn all the different kinds of services. You'll be ramping up from one service to multiple services relating to your profile or domain. So what would I do if I could rewind back in time? Well. I'm here to tell you that if I knew just a little bit of the cloud, I would definitely get the AWS certification, the cloud practitioner certification, because it tells you the fundamentals of AWS services, and it at least lets you know on what kind of cloud technologies are out there. Not only that, but I would actually try to learn different kinds of projects that I can work with in the cloud. Now granted, not every single project might be free per se, because if you work with different services, for example, set to set VPN, you'll still be charged for the site to site VPN itself or on the data that you'll be sending through the site to site VPN. Now that you know what it takes to be a cloud support engineer, go ahead and tailor your resume, sharpen up on projects, and most of all, create your AWS account and start labbing things up. Feel free to watch my previous videos on what kind of labs that I would recommend you to do so that way you have it under your belt and you can apply to be a stronger candidate. If this video has been helpful to you, go ahead and like and subscribe so that way you'll be notified on the next episode. Thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you in my next episode. Bye.